We are hastening toward the end of Lent and the solemn celebrations of Holy Week. Our readings today bring us in contact with Holy Week, now just a week away. The first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, God tells his plan to establish a new covenant. God's covenant is an exchange of persons. It's between God and us. As he says many times in the Old Testament and repeats in the reading today, that I will be your God and you will be my people. Unfortunately, we, his people, are often unfaithful to his covenant. And so that's why God says in that reading that in the Old Covenant, he had to show himself our master. God needed to discipline us. He needed to give us his laws to keep us on the right path. And though it wasn't God's desire to just simply master over us by enforcing rules, rather he wished to place his law within our very hearts and write his words upon our souls. And that was to be his new covenant, to forgive evil doing that we might know him. But humbling ourselves and calling out for God to forgive us was often easier said than done. Even King David, a man who was described as being after God's own heart, he too yielded to temptation. He committed grave sins of sloth, lust, adultery, envy, leading ultimately to murder. And then, therefore, God allowed the just consequences of those sins to fall upon David. As as God says in that first reading, I had to show myself his master, permitting David's son to suffer illness and even death. Finally, as a result of that, David repented, turned back to God, composing the words of today's responsorial psalm that we sung, Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness, and the greatness of your compassion wipe out my offense. Give me back the joy of your salvation. David becomes for us a lesson that we too also must repent. That's what it says in that psalm, that I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. We are the sinners who need to also return to the Father. And using Psalm 51, we also ask for God's mercy and his forgiveness for our sins, to wipe out our offenses, to cleanse us of our sins, to create a clean heart in us so that God can write in our hearts his very word of life within us. How was God going to do that? That was... Through Jesus. Jesus was the means through which he forgave our sins, where he created a new heart within us and established us in a new covenant. In the second reading from Hebrews, it explains that when the person of the Trinity, the second person, came down to us in the flesh, it says that he offered prayers and supplications on our behalf. Jesus prays on our behalf, because we sinners often to do, often fail to do that, He prays on our behalf so that we can be reconciled with the Father. Now, if you think about how Jesus prays for us, when I think about it, I think most, uh, I go to the moments of Holy Week when Jesus prays, uh, for example, in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he literally offers loud cries and tears, as that second reading describes. Or when he's on the cross and Jesus prays for us, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. But as I was meditating about how Jesus prays for us during Holy Week, I realized that, that his prayer begins much earlier than simply Good Friday. And in fact, the gospel passage that we have today itself is kind of the beginning of that prayer for Holy Week. He says, I'm troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour, but it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. 
The context of our gospel passage tonight is chapter 12 of John's gospel, which occurs right after Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem that we're going to celebrate next Sunday for Palm Sunday. In other words, its immediate context is already Holy Week. And I never really thought about this before, but John's gospel, Holy Week begins in chapter 12. There's actually 21 chapters in the gospel. And so that means half of John's gospel is Holy Week. If you compare that to Matthew's gospel, Matthew's gospel has 28 chapters, but only two of them are Holy Week. But John, he lingers for 10 chapters to tell us what Jesus is doing and how he is praying. So beautiful if we think about that. Jesus, throughout Holy Week, is offering prayers and supplications to the Father on our behalf. It's Jesus' greatest offering of himself, the greatest prayer that he has to the Father for our forgiveness. If you think of some of the things that we hear during those 10 chapters in John's Gospel, some of them are the most beautiful and familiar words that we have of Jesus and his most intimate prayers that he has to God. So if any of these sound familiar, do not let your hearts be troubled. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. Remain in me as I remain in you. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. As the Father loves me, so I love you. Love one another as I love you. No greater love is there than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you. Every single one of those lines comes from Jesus' discourses at the Last Supper during Holy Week. In today's gospel, that begins those prayers that we hear culminate in those last few days before his death. In the gospel, Jesus prays to the Father, I'm troubled now, but what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. And at the Last Supper, Jesus will pray again, Father, the hour has come. Holy Week is the hour for which Jesus came. It is the hour to bring about the new covenant through the shedding of his blood. It was for this purpose that I came, he says in the gospel tonight. For this hour, Father, glorify your name. Jesus came for this hour, this this time we are about to embark upon, to offer himself upon the cross, to offer his heart so that we might be given new hearts. And he uses that, that agricultural image that is so easily understood to us out here in the rural areas that unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. We know so readily that the seed must be placed in the ground and it must die. It must produce a plant from it if it is going to give the abundance of grain. And so too, Jesus in the new covenant, he came to perfectly offer himself to the Father on our behalf so that he could yield the fruit of our souls to be reunited with God. He says in the gospel, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all, everyone to myself. When Jesus was lifted up upon the cross, it was to draw all of us sinners into the Father's mercy. When Jesus was lifted up then from the grave, it was to lift up those we who were dead to sin and rise to new life through baptism so that we would have a new heart placed within us. When Jesus was lifted up then in his ascension to heaven, it was so that all might have the possibility of being where he is with the Father and the Spirit forever. This final week of Lent, may our sacrifice to God be a contrite spirit, a humbled contrite heart, which seeks his forgiveness. And that way we will be ready to enter this most sacred week of the year, the hour for which Jesus came, 
the moment of the new covenant. For he wishes to give all of you a new heart, his heart, that we may be his people and he will be our God.